And what instructional video course about signal flow and logic would be complete without at least some mention of MIDI signal flow? I ask you. Even though MIDI messages have nothing to do with audio, they only trigger sound generation or create sound modifications within a MIDI instrument plugin. And even though MIDI messages aren't even signals, they're commonly referred to as MIDI signals. So, you know, hey, why quibble over semantics? MIDI messages are digital messages generated in response to every single action you perform on a MIDI device. Pressing a key, releasing a key, moving a knob or a switch or a slider or a pedal are the types of individual actions that are translated into digital messages called MIDI events or MIDI messages or MIDI data or just MIDI. Now, depending on the type of gear you have, MIDI data gets into your Mac either via USB or a MIDI interface. Now, my main controller is an old school Roland weighted action keyboard, and it only has traditional MIDI jacks on it, the five pin DIN connectors. So that connects to a MIDI interface and the MIDI interface connects to the Mac via USB. And then I've got a nano key and a nano control, and they both have USB ports on them. So they don't need to be connected to an interface. They get connected to the Mac directly with USB cables. Now, the place where you can check to see that Logic is aware of each of your individual MIDI devices is in... That's right, the environment. And if you are particularly predisposed to recoil in horror at the very thought of going into the environment, just think of this tutorial as environment fear aversion therapy that doesn't cost $150 an hour. What's that? Oh, it's my producer talking to me. Yeah, he says I sounded like Jodie Foster saying $150 an hour. Well, let this be my homage to Jodie Foster and let's move along. Now, the area of the environment we're looking at here is called the clicks and ports layer. And it's where we can see all of the MIDI devices that Logic is aware of. Plus, it gives us some insight on how MIDI signals flow into Logic. This large rectangular object, called the physical input, lists in very tiny letters each of the MIDI devices that Logic is aware of. Here we can see the eight ports of my Uniter 8 interface, the Nano key, and the Nano control. Also listed here is an IAC bus, which is a MIDI pipeline feature built into the Mac OS that lets you tap MIDI signals generated by standalone MIDI applications such as Plug the Jewel or Max DSP. Now this physical input thing looks pretty imposing, but I think of it simply as the MIDI sources icon. And it has an output called SUM. And essentially all of the MIDI data from all of the devices listed on the MIDI sources thing are merged together and funneled down to this SUM port. Then we have a cable routing the MIDI data into this keyboard object labeled input notes. This is a passive MIDI object, meaning that MIDI data flows right through it. But if you play on your controller, the keys will illuminate. This is really handy for troubleshooting in situations where you're playing on your controller and you think you should be hearing a sound, but you're not. So you can open up the environment and go to the clicks and ports layer and play on your controller. And if the keys on this little keyboard light up, then at least you know that your controller isn't on the fritz. You can also click on the keys and that will generate MIDI notes, which is also helpful for troubleshooting purposes. Okay, so from the input notes keyboard, the MIDI data makes its way to this MIDI monitor labeled input view. This is also a passive object and it'll display whatever MIDI data is coming into Logic and it'll also display the notes that you generate when you click on the little input notes keyboard. And from there, a cable carries the MIDI messages to this little thingy called the sequencer input, which is the actual MIDI input into Logic. And from there, MIDI will be patched through to whatever instrument is assigned to the track you select. And when you go into record, MIDI will be recorded to that track, which I'm going to do right now by replaying the trumpet part. The MIDI data I recorded is now contained in a region, and when I play back the track, the region acts as the MIDI source to play the instrument. 
But what's really interesting, and it's something that's easily taken for granted, is that even when a track is playing back MIDI, you can also play that same sound live from your MIDI controller. And I'll demonstrate that by playing some stupid notes over the track. Now, from a MIDI signal flow point of view, what this indicates is that a software instrument is capable of receiving MIDI from multiple sources simultaneously. And this brings me to want to share with you one of Logic's most powerful MIDI recording features that many people new to Logic and even some experienced users aren't aware of. And that's the idea that you can have multiple tracks for overdubbing parts on a single instrument. No overdubbing parts on the same track, no, no, no. No using take folders, oh, heavens no. 